Hello everyone, Pally Tum here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. In today's video, we are taking a look at Thrall. When Thrall was added into the game, well, actually, when was that? Way back on January 13th, 2015, he came out swinging. He was a monster. He had a generic talent called Battle Momentum that a lot of characters back in that time had, where every time they auto-attacked an enemy, they would be lowering all of their basic ability cooldowns. And it never worked on heroics, right? Let's just say it was all basic ability cooldowns. Well, what made Thrall's Battle Momentum especially good is his Wind Fury ability on his E where he can go up to a target, hit them, pop Wind Fury, hit them again, and then get increased attack speed for his next few swings. This coupled with the Tempest Fury that we see here, where that last hit of Wind Fury hits multiple times, that worked for his battle momentum. So he could just cast spells an insane amount in the middle of team fights, and thus be healing for a lot and dealing a lot of damage in the middle of team fights. Well, eventually that was removed until Thrall's newest patch, which was on September 27th, 2021. They actually just slipped this in here. Elemental momentum. Unfortunately, you have to wait until level 20 for this, which I think makes it a little less valuable. But basic attacks reduce his basic and heroic ability cooldowns, which is a super nice addition to see added back in. Because when he was brand new, that was a core part of his identity, at least to me. And I missed it for quite a long time. Now, I have to admit, it's been a while since I've played Thrall. Uh, you know, he's a bruiser. There's a lot of bruisers in this game. And typically, if I'm playing a bruiser, I'm going to be playing Radnros. He's one of my highest win rate heroes. He has excellent lane clear, everything I look for. But Thrall really surprised me. He has such a high amount of self-sustain. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to keep yourself healthy in matches. But it really caught me off guard. It took a few matches for me to really get a feel for what I was doing. But I might have a new character that I'll be cycling into my quick match rotations. As of right now, Thrall has a 47.42% win rate. Not that great. How does he compare to other bruisers? Oh, actually, when you sort by bruisers, Thrall is the lowest win rate there, other than Urel that's sitting at 45.62. So maybe he could use a little bit more love, or maybe just the healing here is a little difficult to wrap your head around. He has a popularity of 10.9% and a ban rate of only 0.5%. So if you like Thrall and you want to learn how to play him, it is very possible that you could play him in just about every game. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. There's been a ton going on in real life. That's why this slowed down a little bit. Uh, Holly's brother's getting married tomorrow. And after that, our schedule should go back to normal and we can get back into our routine, not only with the A through Z, but with all of our series here, they've all kind of been falling apart. All these plates have been spinning and they're all coming crashing down right now, but we'll get them back. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you again soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the Cursed Hollow today. The friendly team, Thrall, Tracer, Nova, Falstad, and Brightwing. The enemy team, Nazebo, Zeratul, Ana, Orphea, and Jaina Proudmoore. This game should be a good example of the typical quick match thrall, where I'm the only front line for my team and I just have to figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> Very common occurrence these days. I've tried both of the, uh, all three of the talents at level one, I guess I should say, but both quest talents fill me with nothing but dread. So that leaves me with just this one, Rolling Thunder. All we have to do is chain lightning a target, which is our Q ability, and then auto attack them, and we deal bonus percent health damage. The enemy team doesn't have too many high health targets, although Nazebo can get there over time, but this is still bonus damage that we really don't have to do too much of anything extra for. Nazebo is pushing down the bottom lane a little bit, sees us now. We're going to root him in place with our W ability, the Feral Spirit. And then I'm just going to move down here to start soaking XP pretty early on. One of the core components of playing Thrall is understanding the Frost Wolf resilience. This is our life 
line? I don't know what I want to call it. I was going to say our life's blood, but I don't think that's right either. This is fundamental for our success. So the sooner you understand it, the better off you're going to be. Every time we cast a spell, it triggers a buildup inside of our medallion over here. So watch our Q ability as it bounces between minions. Look at that, for a full heal actually, off of just one use of our Q. And if we do that again, we should get another full, full heal. Every time we fill this medallion, we're getting 241 health back. So think about Thrall in the early game as trading his mana for health pretty often, at least during the laning phase. We know Zeratul's down here somewhere, or maybe he just left, but that's why I wasn't pushing up at all. As far as our actual lane clear, it leaves a little to be desired. It's not bad. It's not great. Uh, one thing we can do as well is our W ability works exactly the same. So you can actually hit seven minions if you aim this right, which means you're getting seven applications of Frost Wolf Resistance. Oh, that was bad. Which can be a quite a lot of sustain. Now, in the early game, our E ability, which is Wind Fury, costs a ton of mana and is probably not something that I want to prioritize too much. But because we're just about to hit... Yeah, you keep taking those tower shots, my dude. Yeah, you take those tower shots, my dude. I don't mind that one bit. Uh, we can get Mana Tide, which now every time our medallion gives us health back, it's also going to give us mana back as well. So our sustain just went through the roof. Nazebo's super low on HP. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up to him again. Let's see if we can sidestep some of this Zeratul stuff. We did dodge the jars, and I'm going to have to just trade in here and hope for the best. You could see that health we were getting back was pretty high, but unfortunately, I overextended a little bit too much. Now, Nazebo's actually going to get a ton of value. False dead, can you clear, but real face. He should be able to fly up to the objective. Oh, he's flying there. That's perfect anyway. Thank you. So keep all of this in mind as we're building out the rest of our build because this is the fundamental that we're going to be playing around for the rest of the game. Our entire team has backed and the top objective is not being contested by anyone. Looks like only Ana moving into it right now. Orphea a little out of position here. Let's hit her with all of our abilities. Uh, Zeratul showing up now as well. And it looks like we're slowly but surely being pushed out of here. I do have a chain lightning we could throw forward, but not too much more after this that and it looks like we might be giving this i mean we can do it again we could do it again if zero tool opens up on brightwing we're going to need to engage pretty hard i'm sending the root out and then kiting back we're waiting on our cooldowns orphia overextending one more auto attack might do it the chain lightning forsook me but that's okay we still got it now jaina pushing up pretty far we can root her in place and try to deal some damage and then back up and wait for cooldowns our team is getting picked apart over here by the looks of things. And if I stay any longer, I'm just going to join them. So let's root this Zeratul and start to move out. Now, normally most characters would need to back after a situation like that. We could simply use our abilities on this minion wave and be back in fighting form in no time. This could be a level that helps us out a little bit with our survivability, or we could go for Maelstrom weapon and move a little faster. Kind of hard to say. I tend to play a little bit more of a hit and run thrall, I've noticed. So let's go for a tactic that might benefit us a little bit more. This is Ancestral Wrath. Every time we fill up our Frost Wolf Medallion, it's gonna give us a stack. And if we get eight stacks, we're then able to cast this ability on an enemy player. And that enemy player will take damage and we will siphon health from that damage, basically. This is a great way of increasing our survivability in team fights. It just takes some actual buildup outside of team fights to get it working. The friendly team not fast on these rotations at all. Zeratul continue to chase me out here. We are not going to be able to win in a fair fight, but Luckily for us, Tracer rotating down is not a fair fight, and we pick up a nice couple clean kills there. I'm going to go for the channel. Jane is pretty far away and already used her Blizzard ability, so I don't think she can interrupt us. Uh, Tracer is taken down, but that's okay. We got what we needed there. And then again, we just rotate back to the bottom lane and start to focus on building up our stacks for the next fight again. Our survival is the most important thing to us, and this is how we build it up.
We're coming up to level 10 pretty quickly. Out of the two talents we could take, I definitely enjoy Sunder more. I think splitting the ground open and dealing a bunch of damage is pretty cool. But in most cases, I find that... Um, I was hesitant on this. We did some practice games on Twitch, and I was really sticking with Sunder. I really liked it. But Earthquake just controls areas so well that it's hard to deny how effective it can be. Especially when you have a bunch of assassins on your team and on the enemy team, if you're able to shut down any momentum, it can have a great, great, great effect. Arguably, I should have stayed down in the bottom lane to clear that camp. In fact, I mean, this should be Falstead's job, but uh, I'm going to try to do it. Clearing bot, then on my way. Uh, we were going to record some A through Z's on the live stream yesterday, but we got completely stomped in all of our games, <laughs> and I couldn't show off any cool Thrall stuff. And then my voice, I've been really struggling with it for I would say about a month. It's just been super sore and, and super raspy. So I was trying to save it as best I can. If I can't talk, I can't do my job. So that's why we're trying to just do this in a random game today. The night camp pushing in is nowhere near as much of a threat. Those siege giants can take that building by themselves. We don't want that to happen. So now we just move up here. We pop the earthquake. We slow all these guys down and hope our team follows through. We're trying to siphon as much health as we can off of this Ana, and it looks like eventually it was enough. We used our ancestral wrath on her in the process as well. And yes, we did walk in and die, but look how much room that earthquake actually get actually put in place for our team. They were able to push in and jump on top of all of those squishy characters that we've been in this standoff with. That allowed our team to take ground and allowed us to take an objective. Middle lane needs to be cleared. I'm going to head back to bottom lane and keep doing my thing down there. And again, the most important thing for me to do is by the next objective, I need to have another Ancestral Wrath. Once we get to level 13, we're also going to get, and Spell Shield could be pretty good here. Spirit Shield could be pretty good here. It's Thrall's custom Spell Shield. It's even better than the default. Uh, Nova warns the area is dangerous. Is that because she's rotating down? Okay, we're going in. We're slapping. Here's the root. I'm just going to take that regen globe in the middle of the fight. Brightwing teleporting onto me too was perfect. Uh, we do not have our next cast yet. Where's... Ooh, hello. Oh, you got me. Wait. My spells bouncing around to the zombies actually healed me. <laughs> I never even thought of doing that before. And now if Zeratul re-engages, re he's going to be in a bad spot. So Brightwing's already channeling this. Let's let her finish it. Anna fucked that up for us, and she's just going to keep doing that. So if we all channel at different angles, she's not going to be able to hit all of us. She's got to decide. She's buying time for her team right now. I believe she only has one shot left. If that... I don't know how Anna's ult works, but she didn't hit anybody there. She went right between the goalposts. Um... It's nothing but spell damage. I really like this because it's literally just a health pot whenever you want it. I'm going to take it just to show you. The spell shield is probably better. And I'm just going to say that for the record. Spell shield is probably better here. But literally, if I take any damage, like right here, we just use our trait and heal it back up. And we can keep pushing for fucking ever. I might even earthquake this. I'm going to. It's just a cooldown. And we might even catch Orphea with it. Look at that happy little accident. Anna can't move up. We see Zeratul taking a camp. He pieces out over the wall. I'm actually going to try to finish off the camp if I can. Uh, triple tap is being used over the wall by our friendly team Nova. She's doing pretty good damage with that. If Orphea re-engages, I don't think she will. I think she's going to come back from this direction. So let's just hit this wall as hard as we can. The biggest downside to Earthquake is that it does have that gigantic 100 second cooldown. So it is just a cooldown, and I don't feel bad about using it, but man, it takes a while to come back sometimes, let me tell you. The root hitting Orpheus stops her in her tracks, and with the burst of our team, we were able to take her down very, very quickly. We managed to take out the keeps in both the top and bottom lane, middle lane holding strong for the time being. What's he doing? Looking for a pick? Jaina up in the top lane. Looks like Nova and Falstad both rotating up there. Zeratul sees it, though. Brightwing's already on the way. This is very good Brightwing. Very good map awareness. 
I like to see that. I was going to try to rotate up, but it's actually a much better use of my time to just try to take this building right now. Get that passive XP trickle in for our team. Uh, okay. That's kind of odd. Let's just go ahead and use our Wind Fury to disengage here. And then use our Frostwolf Resilience new active that we got at level 13 as just a health pot. And look how much self-healing I just did. Literally, I'm back to full health. Like, that combat engagement never even fucking happened. It's just ridiculous. Uh, we are going to Wind Fury here. We are going to get caught. Let's make sure we're siphoning HP. Here's an Earthquake trying to help our team move in. Brightwing was teleporting in to help me, but unfortunately, I died a little bit too fast. I think my Frostwolf Resilience was on cooldown. But still, we got in the right position. We're the only front line for our team in this game. These kinds of deaths are going to happen. It's just the fucking reality of quick match. But we still allowed our team with our utility to pick up two kills, making that a favorable trade for us. You have a talent tier advantage at the moment. My favorite talent here is the Tempest Fury. Although I've been landing my roots pretty good. Alpha Wolf, if we root someone and then auto attack them, very similar to our level one talent where we chain lightning someone and auto attack them, we're going to do bonus percentage health damage. And let's not forget, this is also taking the root time and increasing it by is it 100%? It goes from one second to 1.5 seconds? That's 100%, right? I don't do math, especially on stream. It gives me the most anxiety I've ever had in my life. 30 seconds on Earthquake, so I'm actually not super safe here, but I am going to still continue to hold the bush. Uh, our team did get boss, and then it's pushing the bottom lane, so we see Zeratul trying to deal with that. Uh, I'm not going to do it. We, if I didn't have Earthquake, I think that route would be more valuable, but because we have Earthquake, and we could just lay that down whenever we want... Uh, I think we gain a lot of value there. Anna sitting back in her base, literally in the spawn. I don't know what she was doing there unless she just respawned and using her ult to interrupt this ult, uh, this channel. That is the right thing to do. However, uh, there are better things that she could be doing, I feel like. I mean, we're gonna get this regardless. They didn't really delay anything. They delayed the inevitable by two seconds. We do have a pretty big minion wave pushing in to the tier one structures here. We're going to earthquake this again one more time. Start to leech some life off of the enemy team's fall stand. And I'm going to continue pushing in as long as my team wants to. And it doesn't look like they want to anymore. Maybe Zeratul was on the back line there. If we can continue to push in and shut them down from this direction, that may not be that bad. Although I'm just being slowed around every corner. Very difficult for me to get the wheels turning at this point. We're in a pretty good position to take down this Merc Camp that they took over, though. With our level 16 talent, our Wind Fury, the final hit hits three times, which is giving us more of our Frost Wolf resilience. And because we have the mana talent, from the early game, we can just cast this whenever we want and then make mana. <laughs> At least I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we generate mana doing it. The objective is up. I didn't see this notification. Nova is on point heading up there. Let's see if we can distract this Zeratul a little bit. Got him to use his blink at least, so he's not going to be moving too fast over walls. I am going to make my way up to Nova. She is being interrupted by the Ana ult. Uh, if I stay right about here... We can intercept anyone that comes in from this boss area. Zero tool right here. Orphea above me. The root does miss, and that feels bad, but we are totally engaged. And the triple swing. That's 302 damage. Each wind fury. 302. Fu oh, thank you. I rooted him. <laughs> um, if I had wind fury, we could chase this a little bit easier. Nazebo is super weak here. Let's see if we can get in chain lightning range. We don't even need to. And now this is a free boss for our team to take. Let's move in and tank this as best we can. When I started playing Thrall, I didn't get the play style at all. I picked him back up for the A through Z, obviously. He's not a character I really keep in my rotation. I considered him just a worse Ragnaros, and I was so wrong. He's the self-sustained god. I've healed myself for 21,000 HP, almost as much as the enemy team's Ana, who keeps using her ult to deal damage during objectives and not to heal her allies. 
Uh, the map is pretty opened up at this point. We have some merc camps we could take if we want to. Uh, at level 20, I really like Windrush. Uh, it allows me to get away with doing a bunch of stupid shit, which is always pretty fun. It's also a great defensive tool as well. Let's make sure we're using our health potion to keep ourselves alive. Zero tool jumping on our back line. The triple tap is going to secure that. Water elemental moving forward. Maybe we focus that down. Ooh, that's an upgraded triple tap, boys. We're on Jaina right now. She is not rooted, but here's an earthquake anyway. Ooh. Yeah, I'll teleport in on that, dude. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Boss stun on top of an earthquake? Yes, please. Uh, that teleport does have an 80 second cooldown. And it is unique to Thrall because it gives him Wind Fury as well. So that gives us a direct benefit of our Tempest Fury because we're basically hitting six times with a single cast. Now walking up to the core at the 16 minute mark, level 21 to 18 on the enemy team with four persons dead. Anna sitting back in the base, maybe ready to use her ultimate again to interrupt something. I hope she doesn't get a choice, uh, doesn't get a chance. The friendly team not focusing the core as much as I would like. They were clearing minions instead. Zeratul's gonna be back up in just a moment. When he does spawn in, we're likely going to use him as a health siphon target, just like that. Root him in place, kite away. I had my Frostwolf resilience buff if I wanted to give myself another heal there as well. But this is the most popular way of playing Thrall right now, give or take a couple talent choices in there maybe. It is so much sustain for a character, but that doesn't mean that we can just go all in every single fight. You really have to play around your cooldowns quite a bit. You really have to make sure you know where your healing's at and where it can come from if you want to be successful with this setup. But man, it is super fun once you get it going. So the talents we used in today's video, Rolling Thunder into Mana Tide, Ancestral Wrath, Earthquake, Frost Wolf Grace, Tempest Fury, and Wind Rush. Stats for the game, we ended up being top damaged by just a smidgen, and we almost matched our damage in healing. <laughs> and we out-healed the enemy on it. All right. All right. Good. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And we'll be back again soon.